Well, here we are on May 4th, 2018, and I'm wanting to understand winning in the new age of B2B sales technology. I'm here with Kevin Asher. Kevin, if you could, please introduce yourself and tell the world why you're the most relevant person to facilitate this topic. Hello, world. <laughs> I am Kevin Asher, and I have spent over 20 years as an individual seller and sales manager. And just over the last three to five years, I realized there was a fundamental change in how sellers responded to buyer needs. And so much of that change has been accelerated by technology on available both to buyers and sellers. And why I'm uniquely qualified to lead this discussion is because I have the combination of both direct sales experience and the technical knowledge to piece this all together. Because typically consultants don't go deep into the details and the people who are good with the technical details don't know about selling. So it's my life's work to bridge the two, to help sales teams and the individuals serve their clients be more awesome by improving their relationship with technology. All right, I'm convinced, Kevin, you're the best guy for the job. But also in your panel, you've got some other noteworthies. It was such a pleasant surprise to see such qualified people come through so quickly. And so what drew me to the panelists, virtually everyone has significant managerial and operating experience within sales teams. And at first I was planning on it being North American only, but there are a lot of great international candidates as well, such as George and Alexander from Australia. Rainier from Europe. Nice mix of seniority of individual skill sets, backgrounds, geographies, but every one of them has direct experience on how technology has transformed the buyer-seller interaction. So we started our first theme, wanted to start off at the broadest level, understanding how sales, from the sales perspective, what are the biggest challenges and how have those changed over the past three to five years? Essentially just what are we observing that's fundamentally different now than it was just three to five years ago? Technology cuts both ways. And how it's helped buyers is that they feel more emboldened and more empowered to get more information, find more choices out on their own, and have higher expectations of what they expect from their buying experience. And this comes from a variety of different factors that, again, weren't available just a few years ago. So the rise of globalization is not just for big companies. With marketplaces, both large and small, my need is small or complicated. I have more variety of vendors or solution providers that I could choose from, as well as more tools to allow me to approach and solve this problem in-house. May not get 100% of the quality of the solution, but 80% for zero cash cost is a very viable option in many situations for many industries. As well as technology has enabled more companies to enter the market in virtually every industry. And so now all of a sudden you have more companies with more salespeople, more value propositions, and that ends up making us largely sound alike. And so we try to differentiate sometimes by trying different sales methodologies, such as Challenger Sale or Miller Hyman and the like. And overall, this just provides an abundance of choice and differentiation between buying and selling experiences. And lastly, what I'll say is, we as consumers expect more, more conveniently, for less money. And I think those expectations have spilled over into the B2B world as well. Okay, and getting into that on key point number one, we see both Joe and Paolo have made some comments. It was surprising to hear Joe's perspective that how companies are willing to take on more complex work themselves than ever before, both domestically 
and broad scale internationally. That was a, a pretty fresh insight that I think a lot of us hadn't seen before. And Paolo's point is another flavor of that, that basically we're competing globally, things are moving very quickly, and it's just taken as a given that as salespeople were focused on client needs, on those client industry dynamics, and the more that salespeople can spend on educating themselves and therefore educating their clients, those are the ones who win. Key point two builds on the fact that, okay, so buyer expectations are growing, and now there's a, an increased spectrum in quality of sales teams who are responding to that challenge. And part of the trend that David is really referring to is that specialization is now almost a requirement in sales. And I say almost the top performing sales teams have embraced the world of specialization. This means both role specialization, separating hunters from farmers, from lead generators and closers, solution experts. In the, this is now a team game. And so Alexander basically brings that point out in that the solution selling is really about challenging the status quo and helping clients understand their business better than they think they understand it themselves. And so that's what he means by inventing problems. It's in quotes, it's not really inventing, but it's educating, it's opening up the buyer's eyes to problems that they didn't realize exist. So then the third point, the ability to take more on yourself. So for all the salespeople out there, they recognize that your biggest competitor is status quo, or we'll do it ourselves. And like Joe had pointed out, more complex work, bigger companies, and bigger scope. And it doesn't matter what industry you're in, B2B, B2C, which then leads us to point number four, is that our reputation precedes us. And back to the trend of buyers have more information. They not only have more information to help diagnose our problem, to help examine alternatives, but they also have more information to know about you individually as a salesperson. Because there are LinkedIn being the top of the list, but other presences as well. There's nowhere to hide. If you haven't delivered quality customer experiences, you run the risk of being eliminated from contention without even knowing it. The interaction is based on value. And with value, you build trust, you build credibility, you do it authentically and things happen. And there's just nowhere to hide anymore. And Kevin, to take a sack up to the focus of this theme and to what you wanted to get out of it, there were three people that seemed to have risen to the top. And I wonder if we'd share a few thoughts about Don, Alexander, and Paolo. Yeah, happy to. What sets them apart is participation in every theme, frequent commenters, succinct and clear, and well thought out comments where they're aggregating. They're not just reacting to an exact point in the conversation, but they take a little bit of a broader view, sort of synthesize, provide more of a framework, and then go into relevant levels of detail. I think that's what brought them to the winner's podium. Okay, great. Kevin, thanks again for joining us. Tell me, do you know what your next theme is going to be on? Yes. It's probably Our on. next theme, which is concluding shortly, uh, goes then to how sellers are responding to those sales challenges, specifically how the skills, intrinsic talents, attitudes, and motivations of your leading sales reps changed. So how, how have we changed in response to these challenges that we just okay, discussed? Gotcha. No, it makes perfect sense. Okay, Kevin, well, thanks for your time. Look forward to uh, touching base in a week or so on the new theme.